Okay. Okay. So this question is asking us to determine the hybridization and geometry around indicated carbon atoms. So what does it mean by hybridization, okay? What does, when I write down when I write down SP and SP2 and SP3, what does that mean? It actually simply means the amount of carbons, no, whoops, sorry. It just means the, hmm, I'm trying to word this as correctly as possible. It's how many carbons, or how many functional groups the carbon has attached to it. I guess that's like the best way for me to break it down. So SP would only have two. So if you remember the whole like 1s, 2s, 1p, 2p. So in terms of like that, but the way I remember it is simply the s always as in you're always going to have a carbon attached to something like this is like the most extreme case but carbon always needs to be attached to one thing and then the p is the second thing that's attached to it so for in case of sp it'll be a carbon that's attached to two things we don't know how but you just know it's two sp2 it's a carbon that's attached to three things once again we don't know how we just know it's attached to three things we don't know what type of bonds these are okay and sp3 you guessed it carbon attached to four things we can assume that they're single bonds because of the fact that that's all carbon can take but that is what the hybridization is talking about now geometry okay we're going to write the correlating part when a carbon is attached to two things those two things want to be as far from each other as possible making this linear because it's going to be a line as in one is going to be on one end and that's going to be the opposite end now when it's sp2 so three things those things want to also be as far from each other, okay? So that one's going to be trigonal, planar, okay? And now, with that, the key part about this is that the reason why we put trigonal planar is because if you notice, actually, just in terms of geometry, it's pretty cool. When it's like that, right? 120 degrees from each other. Okay, as it's a 360, that's actually the farthest points it can be from each other in that specific case. The reason why I'm saying that in that specific case is because when you go to, you know, um, the next one, tetrahedral. Uh, let me just rewrite that. No one can read that. Tetrahedral. Okay, this is actually quite different. So this one is. It kind of looks like that, okay? The exact angles are like 109.5 or something. And you're probably thinking, would it make sense to just have like a 90 degrees? Well, actually, because remember, it's, which is why trigonal plane is even cooler, because this is, remember, it's a three-dimensional plane, okay? And that 109.5, they kind of, you know, one goes a little bit into the page, one goes out of the page, and that shape kind of forms a little pyramid okay and that's actually the farthest all those four can be from each other but in trigonal planar it still prefers to be flat because coincidentally that 120 degrees no matter what angle we try to put it that's actually the farthest they can be from each other and it still remains flat hence why it has the planar to its name okay so tetrahedral definitely one of the weirder ones but that is in summary what hybridization is. And now it's asking you for each of these certain parts. So A has CH3 attached to that functional group. So it kind of looks like this. So we put R because R notifies the rest of the chain that I don't want to draw. And the rest of it is H's. Okay. And as we discussed, that would be S. P three. 
making a tetrahedron. Why? Because it's attached to four things. Now, B is a CH attached to two functional groups on each side. So, kind of looks like. So, we have the H. This will be the first functional group. This will be the other functional group. We just put like R1. Doesn't matter which one it is. Point B is as long as we can show it. And specifically at B, at R1, it has a double bond. So, the double bond doesn't change much because it still follows rules and it's attached to three things. Remember how we discussed we don't know what type of bonds it is? Hence, how this one is actually an sp2 and trigonal planar. Okay, and now for the last one, that one is C. You might guess it, it's going to be C attached to a CH3, and this is the one in question here. So let me just circle it. Okay attached to a functional group, but that functional group actually has a triple bond with it. So, like we said, we don't know what's attached to a bond, we just know it's attached to two different things, making this one SP, and this is a linear. So that's what we have for the geometry and hybridization of each indicated carbon. Okay, so let's see, oh, well then. So, Hopefully, we did this correctly. Um, just as a quick review, as I said, the hybridization can be broken down simply to how many things it has attached to it. It does go into like you know the shells and like you know the P S P one S P two like when you're doing all that. But we really don't have to do that. We kind of just can skip to okay, how many things is it bonded to, and then we go with that. Things do go past, you know, SP3. I think it's like SP3D. That's when you have those really weird, like, um, like the exception, like salt, for example, can attach to six, thing, six things. So there are some exceptions to this. But when speaking about carbons, SP3 is as, as far as it's going to go. Okay. So now let's go on to question.